home. I'm so glad that you are joining me for another week of exploring our faith and life together. This week's special shout out goes to Molly and to Sydney and to Jackson. I hope that you have fun exploring and uh, creating with me this morning. So this week's lesson comes from a book called Malachi, which is a very little known book in the Bible. It comes very close to the end of the Old Testament and just before we start the stories of Jesus and Jesus's lessons. And Malachi was a prophet, so like Jesus and like Elijah and like Moses, Malachi was somebody who taught other people about God and how to create a strong relationship with God. And Malachi noticed that people thought God was just for a certain group of people and that God was on their side and God didn't care about the other people and didn't love the other people. And Malachi wanted to people to understand that God was actually for more than just a small group of people. Malachi's lesson said this, wherever there is incense burned, I am there. Well, that gets me wondering, what is incense and where is it burned and why? Well, I have a few answers, but not all of them. Let's see if some of this helps. Incense is something that you burn, and when you burn it, it has a smell. And even though it's very small, and the smell is invisible, it can fill a whole big space. So incense is often used in a spiritual context for healing. So there's one answer, that is, what incense is. Where do they burn incense? There's a few answers for that one. At the time that Malachi wrote in the Middle East, people burned incense there. But that's not the only place where they burn incense. I have some incense here. This is an incense stick. And this is made in Japan, where they use it in Japan. And this is a little bit similar to what they used in the Middle East as well, although a little bit different. But they also have this. This is called a Palo Santo. It's a stick made from a special type of wood found in Ecuador and Peru. And it was used by the ancient Inca people for the same purpose. They would burn it for healing. And I also have these two. This here is a sweet grass braid, and this is a sage bundle. And both of these were used for the same purposes by the First Nations people in North America. Different tribes may have used one or the other or both as a way of healing and praying and creating community and strength. So it sounds to me like they have different forms of incense all over the world. Maybe that's what Malachi was getting at. Wherever incense is burned, in all the ancient peoples of the world, God is there. And through that burning, we're reminded of God's healing. Now that gets me wondering, maybe you remember a story from around Christmas time about these three magi who go to visit the baby Jesus and they bring some gifts. And do you remember what those three gifts are? And the third one is incense. I wonder what the storytellers who were telling the story of the three magi, I wonder if they knew Malachi's lesson about how important incense was to symbolizing healing and God's healing presence and how incense exists among all people all over the world. I wonder if there's anything that you can think of that we use in our life now to symbolize God's healing, like the ancient people used incense. We don't often burn incense in our home anymore, 
But do we have other rituals or symbols that help to remind us of God's healing presence with us? I can think of one that we often use at the church. It's sitting right here behind me. It's a candle. So in our church, we don't often use incense anymore, but we still light a candle. A candle that, like incense, can spread in large spaces, even though it's very, very little. And it reminds us of God's presence and God's healing with us. So what are other things that maybe you can think of that remind us of God's healing? So for our creative time today, we're not going to create incense because incense you have to burn and maybe that's not that safe. But there's lots of other ways and other cultural traditions that remind us of God's healing presence and invite us to wish that healing presence on others. And one thing that came to mind was a tradition that I saw in Nepal. It's a Buddhist tradition and it's prayer flags. So prayer flags are flags that are just that. They're covered in symbols that are symbols of good intentions for people. And then they are flown in the breeze, not as though the prayer is going to God, but in fact that the good intentions written through that prayer are spread to all the people. It's a very similar idea as incense, how incense spreads and fills the space and brings healing to all who are there. So these prayer flags are similar to that, only without the burning. So I thought we would make something similar to a prayer flag. Now this isn't going to be exactly a prayer flag, but we want to do it with the same intentions as a prayer flag. And that's the intentions that we wish good and healing on those around us and the world at large. So we're going to create something like that and then we can hang it up and imagine as it's hanging that those in good intentions spread from our flag to the world. So to get started, you will need to get some kind of material. And what I have used here is an old t-shirt. And I've cut out part the back of the old t-shirt because uh, it was no longer a good t-shirt. And I'm going to use this as my flag. So once you have found a piece of material that you can use, whether it's a recycled t-shirt or some other kind of material that you have in your house, then we'll get started. Along with our material, you're going to want to go and get some markers. You could use washable markers or you can use Sharpie type markers like I have here. Both of them should be able to work on a piece of material. And as we're not washing the material afterwards, they should be fine and they won't fade. They'll last. Now in a traditional Buddhist prayer flag, the color matters. Each color has a different symbol or a different meaning. The red one usually symbolizes the element of fire in the world. And there are different colors like blue and white and yellow and green, each one symbolizing a different element of life. So for today's prayer square that we are making, we want to think about good intentions and healing that we want to offer the world. And then we're going to put those symbols on our prayer square. I'm going to grab the black marker because I think that will help me to outline my symbols. One of the first things I think I would like to offer the world is a prayer for joy. So I'm going to put a smiley face on my prayer square. And I'm going to just outline it carefully. We want to try and use simple symbols because it's difficult to draw on material. So the simpler the symbols that we make, the easier we'll time we'll have and it can still be very recognizable what we're wishing for. So there's my smiley face for my intention of joy to the world. I think I have another intention and that's love. I wish love to the world. So I'm going to draw a heart over here and I'm just going to do it nice and gently 
It doesn't have to be perfect. I'll do a nice big heart. There's my second intention for love. I also think that life is really important. I wonder what symbol you might come up with for life. The symbol I can think of is a leaf. So I'm going to draw a leaf over here. A leaf that opens up in spring, right? After a long winter and reminds us that life comes back again, even after long, cold, dark days. So there's my leaf for life that comes back after dark times. Uh, I also want, think strength is important to wish the world. Hmm, how would you symbolize strength? Well, I'm going to be very creative here. I am going to draw a triangle for strength. And you might be wondering why a triangle for strength? Well, what? When we're building things, if we build things with triangles, they're much stronger than building with squares or rectangles. So for me, a triangle is a sign of strength. It's something that will hold things up that we're trying to build. So there we go. Let's see, I have joy and love, life and strength. Do I have any more good intentions for the world? How about light? I'm going to put that right in the middle. And for that, I am going to draw a sunshine. There we go. Nice and big and central because at the end of the day, I think God brings light. And with that light, we have all kinds of other things like joy and love and life that come out of that light. So that's why I'm going to put mine right in the middle. There's my light. Great big sunshine. Now, if you want to take this further, you can color in some of your symbols. I think I'm going to play around a little bit with some of the colors and see if I can make my symbols pop a little bit more. Inspired by the prayer flags of Nepal and Tibet and parts of India, a Buddhist tradition of offering good intentions and prayers to people around the world. The symbols that I use were reminders and good intentions for joy and love and life and strength and light. But what are the good intentions that you chose? I chose also to draw my symbols, but as I was drawing them, I thought, if you're not comfortable drawing symbols, you could also offer words on your square, or maybe you want to add words after your symbols. There's no right or wrong way. What's important with our prayer square is to remember the intentions, that the prayer is not for us, and the prayer is not to look good or to make something perfect. The prayer is about us finding inside of us our wish for others and offering that out to the world. We often have a blessing that we do at during our church time and that is also a way of offering good intentions to another. So I thought today let's end our time together with the blessing that we have been doing for the last few weeks. If you haven't been with us on Sunday mornings, that's okay. I'll teach you the lesson here and it has some actions. So the words are, may there be love in your heart to give. May there be joy in your heart to share. And may there be strength in your heart to lift others up.
Let's do that one more time. Ready? May there be love in your heart to give. May there be joy in your heart to share. And may there be strength in your heart to lift others up. May you go out into the world this week with good intentions on your heart to offer the world. Thanks so much for joining me this week. We'll see you next week. Bye.